Excellent. Hello. Welcome to Adventures Wanted. My name is Chris. I will be your DM for the next hour. What are we doing here? We are playing Dungeons and Dragons. Woo! Great. Woo. Thanks, guys. That's really, you know, pump up the room. I mean, Woo! <laughs> Hooray! <laughs> Better? I mean, that was a bit much, but okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do. Uh, before we get started, um, obviously we are running a continuous Dungeons and Dragons campaign for the 100 hours in Edinburgh, and we are on hour 83. So you are coming into the story slightly more than three quarters of the way through. <laughs> I will try and explain what is going on and help everyone in the room and on the Twitch stream to uh, understand what is happening. If at any point during the show you have questions you would like to ask, please feel free to enter them into the chat, Twitch chatty window thing. I'm not a tech person. Just the Twitch chat, Chris. Twitch chat. Twitch <laughs> chat. Uh, please feel free to ask questions there. Or if you are in the room, please feel free to shout out and say, I don't know what's going on, give me a hand. That's totally fair. And we don't want you to at any point feel like you don't know what's going on. That would be... That would be awful, we don't want that. Don't want that. So, in line with that, in the audience, you are welcome to make noise and move as we have a relaxed attitude to sound and movement in the audience for the benefit of those who'd have difficulty being still and silent for an hour. However, this is technically not a relaxed performance as we have some loud sound effects from Wilhelm in the back. Ah! There we go, splendid. Um, the lighting will, however, stay exactly the same. Uh, the only loud noises will be from through the speakers. <laughs> there will be loud noises. Um, there's also some background music. If I take a break for any point, for any point, for any reason, at any point during the show, you can head through either of the two doors here. They head out to the foyer, where a sweet company member wearing a black or red t-shirt with the sweet logo on will be able to assist you. You will need them to get back into the room as it is a key fob system. And uh, if you need assistance in the room, our stage manager Nemo is over there. <laughs> <laughs> Nemo is here in case you need anything. Uh, just give them a wave or catch their eye and they'll happily assist you throughout the show. So, what are we doing? We are playing Dungeons and Dragons. Are we all au fait with what Dungeons and Dragons is? Yes? No? A little bit? Yeah, lovely. Splendid. Uh, just to make sure we're all on the same page, uh, we are playing a fantasy tabletop role-playing game. That means the four people to my left and right play characters in a shared fantasy universe, and I play the rest of the fantasy universe. So everyone they encounter, uh, everything they do, all, everything they have to um, circumnavigate, horrible traps, uh, dangerous monsters, all me. Um, to make sure I don't abuse that awesome power and do horrible things to them at a consistent rate, they have character sheets, give them special abilities, and they roll 20-sided dice, much like this one. A 1 is awful, a 20 is brilliant. Please feel free to cheer and or boo, depending on how you feel about the character at that given time. Um, together we will then collaboratively tell a story. Let's introduce everyone at the table. So starting on my right, can you please give your name, your pronouns, your character's name, their pronouns, and a bit about who they are, what they're up to. Sure. I'm Naomi. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, uh, as are my characters. Uh, Roberta Risk, who is a war bar journalist extraordinaire. Uh, she has been figuring out what is going on with this cult at the minute. There's two cults. There's a yellow cult and a green cult. Correct. And um, the green cult seem to be building something, and uh, the yellow cult seem to be... Marge, like from a tangentially helping them build the thing. I don't know if they fully realise it, but either way, you know. It's right. We'll use, we'll use a bit of time at the top of the story to help explain that point that hasn't quite been cleared up yet. Yeah. <laughs> David, who just unfilled some beautiful metal dice. <laughs> 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 Tell us who you're playing. Uh, I'm playing Vith the Merciful, a lizard folk uh, cleric. Uh, it's he and so am I. Thank you. And um, I have are we on a ship or something? Or just nope. we band and mercy? But we'll get there. Okay. Uh, <laughs> no just, ship the ship. <laughs> I'm just a healer, just looking out for people. So, I didn't catch your name properly. Can you spell it out for me? Uh, V-Y-T-H. V-Y-T-H. The Merciful. Vith the Merciful. Vith the Merciful. There's a folk that could mean anything. There's a folk that could mean anything. Just go around murdering people. Mercy! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. He's crippled. It's only a mercy to put him down. <laughs> We're going to get on. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> like, really, though. Go ahead, Anna. Um, I'm Isla. She, her pronouns, and so has my character, Kimmy. She is a halfling monk, and... The monk life was just for the, the peaceful life. Just wanted to do a bit of calligraphy. You know, the big letters at the beginning of the chapter. That's uh, Kimmy's, Kimmy's thing. But somehow got dragged into all of this. It's like you madness. chose the monk life and then the monk life chose you. Mm. <laughs> Ezzy. Oh, um, Ezzy is a Yuanti sorcerer. So she has um, black hair pulled over to the right and then like sort of purple scales running in an undercut, kind of like Chris's hair, but black and purple. And um, they run all down the left side of her body. 
Um, she was wearing cultist rose, but she's now wearing yellow and black. And yeah. And your name is. Is it? I'm sure I said Emma. No, your name. Oh, Emma. There we go. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> Sorry, in character. <laughs> Just because. No problem. Absolutely fine. <laughs> Chloe, can we have the music back? We'll explain what the hell's going on. Thank you. We are in a clockwork dimension. It appears to be entirely made of clockwork. It is known as the Nexus, and uh, all of the floor, walls, ceiling, everything basically, is a constantly rotating gear, moving piston, etc. Everyone is basically standing on a surface that is constantly slightly moving. Best way to think of it. We are currently with a cult who wear robes of yellow and white, who are in the process of trying to purify a shard of crystal. It appears to be gigantic. It juts into the wall of the main room they hang out in, which is gigantic, and uh, takes up most of one surface of one wall. The crystal is in part green, glowing, and magical, in part dull, ore-like, and gray. And the ore-like gray seems to infuse and go through the crystal, and the cult are currently working to purify said crystal on behalf of their god. Another cult, on behalf of another god, working for the opposite reason, seem to be trying to pervert the crystal and using this magical ore that they have, which seems to be the same as what this crystal is perverted into, use it to create portals, take over the multiverse, and uh, generally cause mayhem. Our characters are members of a rebellion whose world was infused with this ore. They have managed to fight this cult all the way back to this, what looks like the center of everything, and are currently trying to work out how these two cults interact and what they can do to help the cult in yellow. The cult in yellow appear to be trying to use uh, the party, and in particular the members at the table today, to help them create the parts to build an animate, gigantic, seven-foot-tall copper robot, which appears to be an important part of their plan to purify said crystal. Roberta, some of your allies went to try and find the beating heart of this that could be used to make this robot animate. And in the meantime, you have been with the remaining cult members asking questions about what they're doing and what is going on, because I'm sure you have some burning right at the forefront of your mind. Who would you like to speak to? Who would you like to talk to about this? So... Who's gone off? So it's... Uh, Ezzy, Kimmy, and two characters who don't appear in this hour have gone off. Okay, cool. Um, right. So... So everyone was to have all the information that I Yes, the leaders of the cult have all this information. Um, leaders of the cult, sorry, leaders of the rebellion have all this information and are with you. Yeah, I didn't, I very specifically said I didn't necessarily trust the cult. Um, yep. Right, cool. So I pass off all that information. I think I would probably want to follow them that's quite all right uh the people who went to get this um engine a heart for this robot if you will are now returning with a spherical object that the uh, yellow cultists are getting very excited about and helping build into the copper suit uh that is happening right now the people who went off are currently sat on the floor looking a little bit exhausted after their exertions in the I'm past fine. hour <laughs> roberta yes we kind of did a thing. Okay. Not sure. He was very cryptic. He was cryptic. Rust. Rust is the leader of the Yellow Cult. They they need some things to complete the thing. <laughs> and then and then he said that they were going to cycle all their souls through it to be in control of it. Yeah, Including the cat. No, no, not, not no, no, not the cat. No, he how, said. <laughs> how do they intend to cycle their souls through it? What do you mean? Well, we asked him a lot of questions about that, and he was very cryptic. Uh, Vith, you were also part of the rebellion in Derelin, and you fought your way through to this point. You are presumably watching all this with a slight amount of amusement, still trying to put together what's going on here. What is going on? <laughs> Nobody's quite sure. They worship a god. They won't tell us about the god. They're trying to build a thing, they won't tell us about the thing. Why are we helping these people? Because we're not allowed to kill them. I mean, why? <laughs> well, that was my question, well, but I've been told we're not allowed to. So, so here's the thing, right? We're in a strange place that we don't know how it works, Correct. and we have access to people who kind of know how it works. Correct. So forgive me if I'm remiss to murder the people who will be able to get us around this place. 
Well, that's why you interrogate them. <laughs> so merciless. Speaking of which, Merciful. where's Rust? <laughs> Rust is working excitedly with the other uh, cultists in yellow who appear to have more of a technical savvy, and they are currently tinkering around the gigantic copper suit trying to uh, fit this engine inside it and trying to make it work. They are they appear to be having some success as you watch the copper suit. They sort of turn a dial and it, an arm moves up, an arm moves down, um, an arm moves so up, That's so an arm moves down. That's so, uh, shh, don't like that. Oh, I think it's amazing. I speak to you for a moment? Of course, thank you so much for your assistance. It, it, yeah. wasn't, it wasn't there, it wasn't there. She I didn't know. go, she didn't go. Well, thank you both for your assistance. I'm sorry, I meant that collectively. Can we do a bow? Oh. Well, I do a bow. Are you joining in? It just looks no. suspicious. Fine. I'll <laughs> bow by myself. <laughs> so... You are very polite. What do you mean by cycling souls? Oh, I am sorry. There are many of us, and we would all like the chance to apotheose with our creation, so we'll probably take it in turns. But how will you cycle your souls through it? What's the actual method? Oh, I see. The uh, automaton here before you is now animate. Thank you so much for your assistance with that. But it does not yet have the ability to retain knowledge, nor the uh, spark within it to... Um, be truly alive, if you will. Um, the, we are about to go and take it, if you will help us with this, to regain some form of memory bank to allow it to have the ability to think, almost like a brain. And then we will probably take it back up here and use a ritual we have been planning for some time to allow some of the souls of our cultists to enter the body of the automaton and, pow- and empower it to uh, function. So what's the brain? What Wait, are you using wh- for the brain? Uh, there is a room we believe is used for this function. Uh, we have seen other robotic creatures around this uh, gigantic uh, nexus, and we are looking to see if we can build one inside our own. Ah, can I, can I, can I just return to the, the soul, the ritual? Yeah. So, What's, will, will, we, will, will they be able to come back after the ritual, or is that it? Since their bodies will be completely destroyed in the process, I doubt it. That was what I was that's, about. Yeah, that's yeah. what. That's what. The but they are very comfortable with the idea of living within this creature. Sure. How long uh, have they lived within the creature? Forever. But, but, who told them to do it? Oh, this is all Hellas's wonderful plan. Hellas. Yes. Your god. Yes. Because once we have the automaton, the automaton can purify the crystal. You see, it's perfectly clear. And why are we purifying the crystal? Once the crystal is purified, all of the elements of um, the other god we do not speak of will be removed from it, and it will be pure and perfect, and we can worship it. But then will the other god be gone? Oh, no, they are not connected in any way. So, theoretically, the other god could uh, take the ore that you purify into your crystal and use the crystal because there's just the automaton left. Presumably, yes. So you're just going to worship it as an automaton forever? No, no, we will be the automaton. Yes. No, but you're going to worship the crystal as the automaton. Forever. In the, when you're in the automaton. We, we presume there will be some form of enlightenment once the crystal is purified, because that is what Hellas has told us. Can I try to speak to Hellas again? Of course. Roll a wisdom saving throw. Twelve? Nope. Nothing. You sort of cast around your mind going, is anyone there? Is there anyone who can explain this to me? Nope. I just don't know really. Why are you squinting? <laughs> <laughs> I always squint. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't You're know. You're a strange little person. <laughs> I'm not little. Yeah, she's quite tall. Yeah, yeah I'm quite, quite tall. How tall are you? I'm like five foot eight. Like seven foot tall. Oh, so <laughs> 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 I'm Elizabeth Nacho, look at me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an elf. I'm like six foot, so I'm an elf. You're still short. Sure. <laughs> Shorter than you. Can we not get into heightest discussions, please? <laughs> Someone called me the tiny one the other day, and now I'm just. I like, see. Fair. Right. Not in character, out of character. James Benison. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. The purification of the crystal is a cosmic task worthy of our attention. Hellas will be pleased. Yes, but, but then you'll all be dead. No, we will not. We will live forever inside the automaton. But do you actually want that? Or does th- yes. is that just what he... Okay. Can I it ask- will be most exciting. I- I'm going to go around and ask all of them. All of them. All of them. You're going to ask all 28 people and You're the going to ask cat. all 28 people and the cat if they yes. want to be part of this. Yes. The general reaction is positive. Most people are quite excited by the idea of this. It is the divine task they've been assigned to. Uh, the only person who gives you any kind of sense that they're not sure is the little girl who doesn't understand what's going on. I give her a hug. Mm-hmm. Seven-year-old girl, part of this cult. 
she is the child of some people in the cult and doesn't seem to understand can what's I, going on. Can I pick her up? Of course. I'm just going to hold her for a little bit. She um, returns a hug and says, Thank you, what throne? Just, you know, the, you have bad parents. Well, I don't think they're bad. I think they're absolutely wonderful. I'm, I'm glad that you think that. They gave me my cat. This is Nugget. Well. Sort of cat she's just stroking by her feet. <laughs> I, 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 yes, I'm, I'm very glad that I didn't eat Nugget. I'm very glad you didn't eat Nugget yes, too. That would have yes, been very it mean. Would, yeah, it would have been very nasty. I'm yes. very sorry. I, I, you just stay with me for a bit. Okay, that seems sensible. Yeah, good. Well, I had to go in. Um. <laughs> <laughs> who is with you, leans across. Roberto, if I may have a word. Takes you to one side. Sure. We have no way of leaving this place if this crystal remains perverted. If it, in its pure form, can create portals, we can use that to find more of the cult and destroy it, and also we can use it to return home after we are done. But it's resulted in 28 people dying, including a seven-year-old who doesn't know what's happening. Well, maybe we make sure the seven-year-old isn't brought into it. I'm pretty sure we can achieve that. And also, from their perspective, they are apotheosing with their god. I don't think they are dying, per se. They all appear to be willing and happy to. It will help us with our goal. I do not see the problem. I wouldn't. Got no heart. <laughs> I just worry that these people don't have their own agency and their own thoughts anymore. And Roberta, that if... they have been asked. They have been asked what they want to do and they have given their answer. But I don't think they're of their right mind. I don't necessarily... That is very right. presumptive of you. No, oh, they are just religious. Exactly. Not their own name, sorry. Uh, I'm religious. <laughs> no. What are you saying? <laughs> what I mean is that they're not religious in the way you're religious. They're religious in the way that they've know? got a constant whispering in their head. And that, that constant whispering is no different from other gods contacting their clerics on other planes of existence. But that's not... And it might just be thinner here, so they have free contact. I have no issue with this. Simon so next to nods and goes, If it is the way, it is the best way. So, oh, what are we doing? Um, Rust, next to you all, watching this conversation unfold, goes, Well, if you are willing to assist us, we now need to take the automaton down to the room we think is going to help us um, give it some kind of ability to hold the memories of all the people who wish to become part of it. And this will help? I, yes, it will make the automaton do what we need it to do, yes. Good, let's do that. Splendid. Will you all be helping? I'm happy to help. Thank you. I like the big robot. I think it's cool. <laughs> it is, isn't it? I'm very proud of it. I and no problem with Rustin, the robot. Rustin, you start talking animately for, like, it could go on for hours, but it's just while you're walking, uh, explaining all of the lovely, like, what he's done. And it's all stuff you don't really understand, but the aesthetic is something you approve of. So it's like, yeah, that's, that sounds cool. It's kind of your response to everything he says. Um, <laughs> Has he? So, I put down the girl. Mm-hmm. Kneel down in front of her, so I'm not. Yeah. She's just looking at you with big, wide, open eyes, yeah. just not quite sure what you're doing or why. If someone does something to you that you don't like... I run away. You run away. I've you always take, done that. You take Nugget, and if, if they... Nugget runs away much faster than yeah, me. Yeah. Nugget is very good at hiding. And if, <laughs> if, if, if they won't let you go, if they won't let you go... Yeah. You do what Nugget does and you hiss at them. Hiss at them. Got that? That's fun. I'll do more of that. Yeah, do that. It makes people go away. <laughs> she starts doing it to everyone. <laughs> Runs around, starts hitting every single person in the room. Because she's seven. <laughs> Are you all going with as the automaton, now walking with a very slow clank, but clearly nothing more than just basic animate power, is walking out of the room, being guided by Rust and some others of the cult who are excited about this moment? Yeah. Yes. I'll follow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll go with. Cool. Does the robot have a name? What a fascinating thought. We have not considered giving it a name, as quite frankly, it it does not. Um, it will have all our names at some point, of course. Okay. Um, I suppose it is made of copper. Let us call it copper. Ah, copper the robot. Yes, <laughs> copper the robot. Hmm. Just the <laughs> Twitch stream. Okay, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> You are all walking again through, because the Nexus is all clockwork, 
traversing it is incredibly difficult. Unless you had guides with you showing you the way, it would be very hard to find your way back, as most of anything that is a walkway is part of a machine that is part of another machine, and so on and so forth. I want to try, as I'm going, I want to try making notes about how I think it's all coming together. Sure, make a survival check. With my new knowledge. With advantage, survival check with advantage. No, no, just no, a survival check. Yeah, a seven. A seven. It is incredibly difficult to make sense of this. Also, as you walk through it, you do note that um, gravity seems to shift as you walk across it, almost as if you are walking from one bit into a bit that goes on its side and then other bit. So it is very hard to tell where you are at any given time. All of you are making your way down along with the robot. There's a group of about ten of you. And as you walk forward, you approach what looks like a relatively solid room. A gangplank, effectively, across some gears, ends, and it looks like you've walked up to a basically cuboid block within all of the other gears that doesn't appear to have much movement around it. Um, one of the other cultists who was helping build and construct the uh, robot turns to you all and says, Hi, guys. Right. Uh, hello. Uh, I'm, I'm Crisis. Hello. Uh, I... You're called Crisis. Uh, yeah. Uh, KY2S's. Um, okay. You seem to be having a crisis. No, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. Having a great day. Lovely. Um, the, 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 this this appears to have some kind of uh, brain, brain hub hub structure. Uh, things inside it. We've we've seen ro robots go in, and then when they come out, they appear to not be as damaged or anything like that. So we assume it's some kind of like a, a fixing a spot, or like a, 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 um, a pit repair. stop, repair station. Yeah, a re re repair station. It's a lovely idea. Repair station, some, 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 something like that. And uh, we thought if we if we could get the creature inside, it might it might work. I push the creature inside. <laughs> you try <laughs> make a strength check against a, a seven foot automaton, please. I try to put the uh, creature inside, and seventeen. Seventeen. You push against the back of it. I shall help. It's sort of. Uh -huh. <laughs> is pushed towards this door. The door in front does not open. It's walking towards a wall and just bonk, bounces off it. Oh, wow. I tried. Can we maybe wait? Just wait until we can open the door. Can, can, can I have a look at the door? Absolutely. As you walk towards the door, it opens up. And if I walk back? Okay. So it needs to already have the frame. I, I, I like that you think I have a door. brain. I'm, I'm quite, that's quite a compliment. I'm pleased by that. Uh, everyone needs a brain, even if it is made of clouds. Crisis, <laughs> realising this, walks up to the door and it opens and says, OK, I think, I think, OK. And drink, drink, the robot walks into the room with him. He and the robot are now in the room and the door stays open. You can see inside if you want to. Yeah, I'd like to see inside. Yes. Inside, it is a uh, about 50-foot cube. There is a large metal frame... Uh, almost like a standing up table in the middle of the room and um, the metal frame in the middle is the only thing you can really see about this room that looks special or different there are various holes in the wall and ceiling all around it and all around the outside of this apart from the door there are no other distinguishing features are you all heading inside? I'm going yes. inside as he goes inside yeah Kimmy goes inside yes I will follow the strange mechanical man Biff goes inside I'm going to wait outside. I'm going to wait outside. <laughs> to the surprise of no one. Um, oh, good. At which point, once you've all stepped inside and the creature and uh, the copper, the robot, is up against this, uh, Crisis looks at all of you and sort of, right, um, well, I, I don't know what starts it off, but this appears to be right, I think. I, 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 I don't know. What I'm does the framework go. look like? I think what does the framework look like? Uh, the framework appears to be, it's about 20 foot tall and about 10 foot wide, so the uh, copper robot is barely, it's covering maybe a quarter of it, if you will. Mm -hmm. But it is clearly big enough that something larger could be here. It is also, as you look at it, there are various straps, gears, markings all round it. Can I stick my head around the door frame and yes. see if I can figure out how it works in there? Make an investigation check. No, a natural one. Again, you are not that versed in technology, so the idea of working out how this would work for someone from a world where there is no technology would be very strange indeed. May I try? Of course. Oh, well, shit. <laughs> That's like 20. <laughs> <A natural> 20? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Viv, looking at this, you have a brainwave. Inspiration strikes you. 
You, there are creatures living in the swamps that you call home where they use vines to wrap around something. Once the vine is wrapped around something, it starts to feed on it. But it does not feed until the vine is wrapped around it to make sure it can't go anywhere. Ah, I see. And there are straps. Yes. I will walk up to the machine and start strapping it in. Okay. You start strapping the machine in. It is still standing there. It doesn't have any ability to... You, no one's told it to do it. It doesn't know what to do. As you start strapping it in, as you clasp the final clasp shut... But to make a dexterity saving throw as you're poking your head through the door. Ah, <laughs> uh, fine. Uh, hang on. You yep. say that. 18 plus 8. That's 24. You leap back as <laughs> the door closes in front of you. Yeah. You and most of the other cultists are outside as this machine has closed shut. Inside, the three of you, Crisis and Enjoy. the robot, are all there. Inside, you don't you get a very strange feeling. It's very hard to describe. It's almost like the pit of your stomach is is doing flips, but you can't explain why. It just all feels very odd inside here. And uh, you in particular, because of the way your magic is cast, start to look around and see that people's hair is starting to float out. The room is charging with static electricity. On the outside, the cube starts to move. It starts to spin around on the spot, rotating around in all dimensions, in all directions. But on the inside, gravity remains the same, so you, just, you, know, you don't know that. But from the outside, this is now spinning, picking up incredible speed, moving very, very, very quickly. And you and the rest of the cultists quite fairly step back a little bit yeah. as it starts. You can, you can hear the electrical charge just powering through it, mostly from static electricity as it rubs against other things behind it. On the inside... You all take one point of damage as static sparks start to come off all of the walls and around you start to snap into you, and you realise that something is might be amiss. Can I try? Can I? Can I try and pull that into me? Try and pull it into you. Yeah, just because I, I work with electricity and storms. Can I try and pull it into me so I take all the damage? Oh, I see. Make an Arcana check. Eight. Eight. You realise what's happening, and you have the power of the storm as a storm sorcerer, so you are very much trying to draw this energy towards you and help your allies, but at this point, all you are doing is making it move slightly, the sparks will spark towards you. You're definitely sort of trying to become a battery for this thing, but at this point, you are not managing to help your allies take no damage from it. Uh, it can, this continues to happen, and as you watch this happen, all of the different holes that you saw, there's an irising effect as... <laughs> They all start to open up. I would like to crouch in the corner and pull up my shield. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I must like to do something before we roll in the shield. Um, is there anything to hold on to? Nope. Apart, actually, no, there's the central piece. You could try and hang on to the central Wait, mid piece. Does it feel like we're moving? Do we feel like we're moving? No, you get a very strange feeling in your stomach like you would on a roller coaster, but you don't feel like you're moving. Okay. Um, just, just kind of ready. Just readying yourself. Yeah. Lovely. Go You're, You're going to climb onto the. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And you are crouching in the corner, taking from my mind the dodge action, if that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> Crisis is just standing in the room, going, "Wow!" Just watching it all unfold around him. Oh, the poor man. Right. Lovely. Can you all roll initiative, please? Uh, no, you're fine because you're outside. But you can just watch it happen. Sick. 18. 18. 6. 6. <laughs> 10. 10. <laughs> Lovely. So, as the room spins, which you don't notice, as the sparking comes off on the inside, as you are all being sparked around by this information, at the top of the round, you all take another one point of lightning damage as the uh, static electricity around you starts to set your hair on end. You even start seeing the sparks between your fingers as it goes. Like, you are very definitely in the middle of some horrible, gigantic, static shock. As that happens, out of the wall where these holes iris open, you all see a huge buzz as what looked like a selection of blue lights just pour out of these wall sockets and start to fill the room. They are blue, illuminated. They seem to um, glow and light up the entire room. And as they zoom into the room, they are flying in and attaching themselves to anything within the room. 
Ezzy. Yes. What is your current armor class? Thirteen. Thirteen. Uh, they stick to you. They just. Yeah, yeah. But how much did you roll? A fourteen. As they stick to you, you use a, one of your spell casting abilities and a spell appears around you. What does your shield look like? Um, it's purple and yellow energy. Purple and yellow energy sort of wards off, and these creatures, as they try and stick to you, just bounce off. They are shielded for this round and this round alone. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, they try and attach themselves to you as well, Kimmy. That is a 23. <laughs> <laughs> they all just all start attaching themselves to you, and as they do, you feel this energy, this electricity pulse that's been powering through, and now going through you and giving you a shock. You take... 11 points of lightning damage as you are charged through with this electrical damage, and they are currently considered grappling you with uh, What is your current armor class? Uh, uh, dodge, I do. Uh, dodge means I roll with disadvantage, technically. All oh, right. So uh, what is your current armor uh, class? 16. Uh, nope. They try and attach themselves to you, but you very quickly sort of ward them off <laughs> and are standing in the corner going, no, 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 as they come around <laughs> you and go and try and attack you. Uh, Crisis is covered, <laughs> covered with them, and takes a lot of damage as they start to shock him and he's twitching in the middle of the room, not quite sure what to do with this situation. You also note that they are currently attaching themselves to the cradle that you're currently held onto and attaching themselves to Copper as this happens. Right, Ezzy, what would you like to do? So all there is, there are these like little metal things. They're little blue dots of light. You can try and examine them more closely. Yeah. Okay, make a perception check. Ten. Ten. They are very quick and it's very hard to tell, but you can see that if you look closely, there is a tiny, almost like metal ball bearing with the blue light glowing off it. They're all these tiny little things just floating around the room at this point. Um... Would you like to do anything else on your turn? I think it's only fair. Do I think if I... Because I basically, I'm happy with the ones that are on the robot, but I don't want any of the other ones to be here. Do I Do I have any sense of whether that's it? They're, they're attached now and they're those, as long as I leave those ones, it's fine? Or like... Roll an arcana check. 15. These, as you watch these things move around the room, your shield's still up for your reaction until the end of your turn, which will drop now. Uh, no, it's, it's around. It's around. So it'll go on there, go. Okay, we're going there. Fine. You're holding the shield up, watching these things bounce off you. They exhibit a swarm-like behaviour. You get a sense that there are groupings of these swarms that are together doing things. If you affect one swarm, you may not affect others. You've fought swarms of insects before. You have an idea of how this might work. Okay. In D&D &D rules. <laughs> um, can I try and... You've had two ability checks, yeah, so I think mind. that's your turn. Unless you want to take a bonus action. Um, I will, I'll shout everyone else what I know. Okay, that is explained to the whole room, so... Yes? Can I hear that shout? What you hear is... On the inside of something that's moving incredibly fast that you can't really hear from the inside. So I can, like, shout through to inspire? No. No, that's fair. I thought I'd ask. I tell you what. I tell you what. Okay. If you want to try and inspire someone from the outside of this... Yeah. Can you inspire someone you can't see? Because uh... you genuinely can't see these people. Doesn't it depend on what you're doing? It's it's like, it says inspire an ally within 60 feet. Okay. okay. Uh, make an athletics check to shout loudly enough to be heard inside this. That's an 18. Who would you want to inspire? Ezzy. Ezzy, from the outside, you just about hear Roberta saying... Saying, whatever's happening in there, Ezzy, you can handle it! Yes, I can. You have an inspiration dice. A d8. I'm going to pass you on my d8. You can also, because I'm a Valor Bard, you can add that to damage, of course. Well. You can let me touch it, you're a fool. That wasn't long enough to actually do anything. That dice set is like cursed anyway, so hopefully you just cancelled it out. I thought about this. <laughs> I lost the d20 to it, that's why it's cursed. Yes. Cool. Uh, Bith, it is your turn. You are currently not... Uh, you don't have these creatures on you. You've managed to ward them off with your with your dodge action and armor class. So you're managing to hold them at bay. What would you like to do? Uh, who is hurt? Who is hurt? Yeah. Kimmy is hurt. And Crisis. Crisis is very badly hurt. <laughs> he is quite in crisis. 
Um, yes. <laughs> uh, I would like to uh, walk to crisis and cast uh, uh, cure wounds. Lovely. What level? Uh, I show uh, how badly does he look. Uh, it looks like his, it looks like he's been shocked and looks pretty awful, but he's not dead. <laughs> uh, I shall go with. Uh, Fourth level. Fourth nice. level. Excellent. So that is it's 48 plus your spellcasting modifier. And plus other things because I am ah, a black player. Black player as well, yep. Yeah. Is it above, um, what was it, 20? Yeah. It just turned above 20. Yeah, you've healed a metaphor. I also heal myself because I have black player. Yes. You do notice this is happening that um, he is still covered in these things. You have healed him, but he is still covered in these tiny ball bearing y things that. Sp- tiny, and they're still glowing with blue light or something may happen to him on their turn mm. because they have more than one thing they can do. Mm. Kimmy, you are covered in these tiny little things. What would you like to do? <laughs> I'd quite like to spot them off. Okay. Uh, contested grapple with them. Is that strength? Uh, in your case, it is athletics or acrobatics. Uh-huh. Um, 13? 13. They're all very low. Um, as you monk that you are, just wave your hands around and try and f- get them off you they are all detached from you and pushed back you are now in the space the uh, grapple curse grapple is one attack so that means you have one less attack this round if you want to attack things okay um i think it's probably best not to be by the robot correct <laughs> so I'm jump off. yep and as i do try and hit out it's Cool. Uh, make a second attack roll with your quarter staff, a one unarmed strike, and then if you want to make another unarmed strike, let me know. Monks. <laughs> um, 16 plus 6. Yeah, your quarter staff launches out and smacks these things out of the air in a big swoop around you. And 14 plus 6. And your monkly strike, you almost pick one and just <laughs> with one finger just reach out, <laughs> grab it, and flick it, and it just <laughs> recover them and goes out the way. Roll the damage on both of those, please. Eleven. Eleven. Yep. And unarmed is eight. Do you want to use a key point? Uh. Another attack or patient defense? Okay. You can either attack again or you could give everything attacking you disadvantage. Monks. <laughs> or run really fast if you really wanted to. Like this. Um. You can also do more damage with it with death strike and stuff. It's I'm not sure what the more important word is written down. It's fine. Yep. So I'm gonna just go key point and do two more on our It's only one more on our strike. Just one more on our yep. strike. Where it was. Yep. Okay. Seven plus six. Yeah, you hit it. Yeah. I mean there's loads of them and it's a swarm. Um that is ten. The swarm that was around you, you've managed to knock quite a few of them out with one swing of your staff and the flicking out trying to get rid of them, you've managed to uh, dis- you managed to take out about half of one of the swarms that's attacking, mm-hmm. attacking you specifically. Good. Right. Uh, Crisis is going to run towards the door shouting and screaming and bang on it profusely. That is his action. <laughs> At which point the creatures are going to try and attack uh, all three of you again. That will be a 12 to hit you. Nope, they don't manage to get hold of you as you move out of the way. A 17 to hit you. Nope. Nope, then you manage to move out the way of them as well as they do this. And an 8 to hit you. <laughs> <laughs> they, they all sort of buzz against you and you buzz them away. You notice this is happening that uh, the, the ones that are buzzing around the copper automaton are buzzing now inside it. They have made their way inside and now buzzing around the inside. And you can't tell from the outside, but there's a very faint whirring and clicking, almost like they're trying to give it life, give it some semblance of life anyway. However, um, Crisis was grappled and no one took the, took the swarm off him. He rolls a wisdom saving throw. Yep, which fails miserably. <laughs> he uses all of his movement to run in a random direction on his turn. That's what happens to him. <laughs> Get to that on his turn as he runs into walls. Ezzy, what would you like to do? Um, um, where I can see one of the swarm ones. Yes. Would they fit into a cube five feet on each side? Yeah, easily. I'd like to hiss really loudly and cast my kind of daggers which produces 
essentially a five foot cube of writhing snakes. Yeah, so little adder things. Mm. Yeah. But so at this point, purple adder things and uh, tiny blue ball bearings are having an all out like Star Wars dogfight in the middle of this room. <laughs> <laughs> on their turn, they'll take damage. 44 on their turn, remember that. And you can maintain it for concentration as well. Uh, lovely. Biff, what would you like to do? Uh, where is this strange man running around? Uh, he's currently <laughs> banging off the walls, just going, just <laughs> running around the room, really, really unhappy. He hasn't taken any more damage on this round because they're not actually trying to damage him, but uh, he is confused. Confused. I'd like to cast the Shield of Faith on him. Oh, lovely, okay, you cast Shield of Faith on him. Uh, how do you cast your spells? What does Shield of Faith look like? I draw with my talons in the air, uh -huh. and then I just prick his neck a little bit to set the binding. Lovely. He, while screaming and howling, I sing, ow, in the neck, and his armor class goes up by two. <laughs> 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 lovely, splendid. What you want to do on the outside there, Berta? Uh, have I heard anyone shout in the meantime? <laughs> No, not really. Hissing. Hissing. What's hissing? I was hissing in a high yard. Crisis screaming. And crisis going. And crisis is just babbling at this point. On hearing the high yard, I'll go. I'll go. Yes, Kimmy, get them, and I'll inspire them as well. Lovely. Okay. Don't touch. Sorry, I cursed dice. It is a thing. Um, cool. Kimmy, you are also inspired, and it is also your turn. What would you like to do? <laughs> That's fine. Yep. Um, I'll just. It's quite, quite enjoying swatting these flies away, so I'll just carry on. Okay. Them. Please do. There we go. So. Yes! Natural 20. A natural yes. 20. Excellent. Lovely. Um, a 12 plus 6. That hits as well, yeah. Five plus six. No, it does not, I'm afraid. You so can you're add your inspiration if you want to. I can add my inspiration. You may as well roll it, but no matter what you roll, it's going to hit at that point because only one away. Ah, all right. Eight. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the swarm that was around you, the swarm that was um, make, the swarm that was trying to impact itself on you, you with your three strikes, roll the damage on them. Eleven. Uh, uh, Yep. And 12. Yeah, you can roll the damage, it doesn't matter. <laughs> and <laughs> 6. Using your quarterstaff like a windmill, you start spinning it around through the air, doing a couple of the cutters you learned when you were learning how to use your quarterstaff for such effectiveness, and just <laughs> just knocking them out of the air with a rope effect as they all go smacking into walls alongside and take out the swarm that was dealing with you. Basically, Yeah, you're majoretting <laughs> as you go, just knocking them all out. <laughs> <laughs> However, as you're doing this, the other swarms realizing that something is hurting them and it shouldn't be hurting them is drawing its attention away from these two and from the one on Crown's Crisis staying there because they, they're doing what they're supposed to do and just come and bombard you. Wait, uh, is it swarm turn? It is swarm turn. I think my inspiration. They will, they will take this damage. Yeah, that's fine. They will take this damage as they leave the space. That's fine. That looks good. 16 points of damage. Uh, on the top of the swarm's turn, you will take another one point of lightning damage. Shame. Um, <laughs> um, at which point, the other two swarms that were attacking your allies come straight for you, Kimmy, realizing you might be breaking down their defenses. Uh, that is a 19. No. Did any of them fly through the cloud of snakes? Uh, no, just one <coughs> left it. And that is far lower. Uh, the monk very ably and nimbly dodges around, spinning up, using it as a pole vault as you've done before to stay out of the way as you swarm sort of <laughs> follow you round the room, <laughs> never quite managing to impact you on the way. Uh, there's one sort of angry swarm of bees following you around as you sort of flip around the room, nothing happening. However, the ones on Crisis are going to keep up their effect, which is what we're doing there. And you also note that the copper robot, as you look at it, its eyes are now glowing with the same blue energy that you saw on these swarms around you. Ezzy, what would you like to do? You are currently not being attacked by anything. They're all sort of following, <laughs> following the monk around the room. And Crisis looks like he might need a bit of... Yeah, Crisis looks awful. Um, uh, Biff! Biff! Are you 
ready to heal him? Yes. Cool. <laughs> what are you doing? Gonna cast Shutter. Right on crisis. Okay! <laughs> you cast Shatter on the poor dude. <laughs> <laughs> you have um, damage on that, do I have um, So I um, kind of slam the floor, but the Shatter happens. Yeah, that's fine. On him. Um, it's 3d10. This is, sorry, it's, 3D10. it's a con save. It's a con save. Which he passes. And the swarm. Also passes. Damn it. 16. Uh, as you do this, the swarm that's on him, yeah, this horrible ringing effect, and they sort of pfft, get knocked off him and are sort of floating slightly dazed in the air, but will be reattempting their assault next time. He looks around and goes, Ah! What? What's going on? It's <laughs> just completely bamboozled by this whole situation. Fifth, <laughs> what would you like to do? Uh, it is okay. There were just things on you. You were a little. Bit what bit things? A little bit things for us. <laughs> oh my god! It's just because he's having, he's having a crisis. <laughs> crisis. <laughs> crisis. Calm yourself. I like to cast calm emotion on him. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let's do the flavor version of this. He sort of goes, oh, oh, right, 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 right. Okay. Um, mm, this is his calm self. Uh, okay. Oh, that was fun. Hmm. Kimmy, what would you like to do? You are currently pole vaulting around the room, running, as I'm, I'm just going to, because it's Monk, you're running up the walls, bouncing off the ceiling, just this swarm just trying to follow you around and never quite catching up with you as you go. What would you like to do? Um, I would like to try and go through the legs of the... Um, it is on a... It is on a grate, so you'd bang into the grate if you did that. Uh, so there's no way through. No, I'm afraid not. Oh, well, I'm just going to try and uh, keep whack it. Cool. Uh, can you can you make three attack rolls for me, please? That hits. Yes. That hits. Eight plus six. Yeah, that hits as well. Okay. You just as you turn around, this swarm coming towards you. Just go. I remember how to do this. Take your staff. Just start up a spinning motion. Just they start impacting directly into it. They sort of flens through your staff. As you start bashing through, there's quite a few of them sort of being knocked to one side and being thrown out of the way. They don't pass through your bullets, they sort of stop realising what's happening. And at this point, the robot, the copper robot in the centre, moves. It reaches down and unbuckles one of the straps. And as it does, you feel like the feeling in your stomach you've had this entire time starts to settle and the swarms just go back into the holes. All the iris is closed, and the robot pulls off the straps and steps off and stands before all of you. Copper! That's so creepy. So crazy, so I think your robot is fixed. Oh! Next time, let's not be inside. Okay. <laughs> you have to buckle it in in order to fix it, though. I think it can now buckle itself. Yes. But next time you have a robot that doesn't buckle itself in, maybe send someone less, more expendable inside. Or just the automaton they have working. I'm not that. <laughs> <laughs> he looks at you strangely, and on that note, we have to end this hour of adventures <laughs> once. It's, thank you ever so much for joining us. You're very kind. So, please help us spread the word about the show on Twitter, Facebook, social media, face to face with other humans. We're on Twitter at Adventurous250, where our stage manager Nemo has been live tweeting this entire last hour. Nemo and our stage manager Naomi live tweet the entire show between them so there is a sort of back, t- back catalogue of live tweets of the last 83 hours <laughs> you can catch up on plus memes and gifs uh, also you can watch all of the hours that have already happened at twitch.tv slash adventurous wanted some of the early hours have now been archived and will be on YouTube by sort of early September so it can be watched then so some of the early hours you might have to wait a couple of weeks to catch up on um, if you'd like to see more of the show please join us in the room it's only £5 to be in the room as you're well aware and you can buy more tickets at Sweet Box Office. There are player tickets. Uh, both David and Emma bought player tickets for today, and they are av- normally available as returns because we have quite a lot of last minute people grabbing them, but we are basically sold out if you try and book them in advance. So come along, see if you can get a player ticket. If not, just watch the hour. That seems like a fun way of doing it. Um, we are trying to use shows like this to introduce D&D to a wider audience than it normally has, as uh, I'm very pleased to say we have a much wider audience than we would normally have at the table today, which is great. 
Um, there is a bit of a monoculture in D&D. We're trying to do things to break through that. And I'm well aware that I stand very much as part of said monoculture. So having three women at the table is great. Yeah. <laughs> we broke one of the sections. We'll get into sectional soon. Yeah, we're getting there. <laughs> we're getting there. But yes, if you think that's an important cause and want to help us do that, please do. Uh, we have a Patreon online where you can support us in what we are trying to do. Or there's just a donate button on our website if Patreon's a bit too much commitment for you. Um, and we do events like this in London, Edinburgh and Brighton. Also more free play events, accessibility events, that sort of thing. So, before we go, I think a round of applause to my wonderful players, Samaya. And if you'd all like a chance to spend a minute or so plugging something from your home life or something at the fringe, please go for it. Emma. Um, so I play with Adventurers in London, um, so if you're in London you should come catch Omen, which is a monthly show. Um, also, I'm about to start a live play podcast, Curse of Strahd, so keep an eye on my Twitter if you're interested in Curse of Strahd. Thank you. Um, I'm a sign language interpreter. I interpret this show um, the first hour of each day into sign language, which is, as you can imagine, great fun, improvised <laughs> show. And she's very good at it. Yeah. yeah. Improvising so. D&D terms that don't exist in BSL is incredible. <laughs> it is very good. Thank you, Anna. Um, uh, echoing kind of Emma stuff, I'm starting to D&D theme podcasts and a D&D stream. Uh, but I can't talk about any of them yet in any great detail. But if you follow me on Twitter, it's at Naomi Jade. It's tagged on the Adventurers Twitter. Um, you can keep updated with that. Tabletop games are awesome. Just play them. <laughs> there we go. That's a nice final plug yeah. for that. Thank you, David. <laughs> thank you so much for your time today. And if you can't join us for another hour of, of Adventurers Wanted, thank you for being here. If you can, see you soon. Yeah. Cheers, guys.